Hi guys, James here from plumberparts.co.uk. You've stumbled across this video because your boiler condense keeps freezing. You found out one night or one cold day that your boiler had gone wrong. You checked the boiler's manual and it said, oh, the condense might be frozen or blocked. And you've gone outside with some hot water, not boiling, and defrosted the pipe. And then after a night, maybe it ran okay, but then frosted up again. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to stop your condense from ever freezing again. So if you're here because you want to learn how to stop your boiler condense from freezing, then this is the video for you. Let's get on with it guys, and remember to hold tight. Before we get started with this video, I'd like to ask you to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's really important and helps the channel grow. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So then, we've got a condensed pipe here along this lovely, incredibly realistic brick wall. The condense is gonna come out here like so, and then it runs down. A lot of houses in the UK, or anywhere that has a condensing boiler will have a pipe like this outside. Now, if I'd been called to this house as a plumber, I would recognize two things probably being a bit of a problem. Number one, the fact that the fall isn't quite good enough. It's probably, I mean, there is a fall there, but water only trickles in here at like a drip from a tap kind of rate. So it's not a lot of water coming through. It's like one drip every 10 seconds and that means the water is taking quite a long time to travel along this pipe and if we're outside like we are now in this area that means we've got freezing conditions coming to this pipe here and we need to increase the speed at which the water runs down this pipe very easy for us to do that is to redo where these clips go but before I move the clips I would also think, do I need to insulate this pipe? If it's freezing, then yes, I probably do need to think about insulating it. And then secondly, do I have enough room behind the pipe to get insulation all the way around? And if we have a look closely at this pipe here, we'll see that we don't really have the room to do that. Now the problem with that is, is some people would get their insulation, I'll just grab some now, and they push the insulation on like this, and then there's a gap at the back and they push it all the way down like that and it sort of hangs on and it's like, oh, uh, job's fixed now, isn't it? Everything's all right. No, it's not all right because bricks get cold. It's that freezing condition on the outside of these bricks can conduct along the back here and then get this pipe cold. And then even if this is over the top, then that's gonna be a bit of an issue. It's gonna get through there and maybe freeze. So the first thing I'd do is I'd look at these clips here and I'd find a way for them to stand off which means if I have to use the same clips, if I don't buy Munson rings or anything like that, I have to find a way of making these stick off from the wall. And it's actually really, really easy, okay? So I've just got some bits of copper pipe here that I've cut off, all at the same length, off a little bit of copper. Always measure off the first bit you cut, don't measure off every successive bit, because if you've made a mistake, you're just going to make it worse. Loads of us plumbers do this. You can buy specialist bracket bits that go underneath your clip to actually space the pipe off the wall a little bit. This is kind of fix number one, and I need you to know that you won't really be able to do this if you don't have a lot of movement in the pipe that comes out of the wall. So if you haven't got loads of movement there, this might be quite difficult. You might have to slightly manhandle the pipe work a bit, which is a little bit naughty. So the first thing we need to do is step out our pipe a little bit. Now, obviously, this is for demonstration purposes, this lot here. If I had to, I would actually change the length of the pipe going through the wall. But a lot of the time you'd have to do that. A lot of the time you get a little bit of play. Uh, a lot of the time you'll find that, especially on gas boiler condenses, the condense pipe is actually a flexible plastic pipe with a push fit over the end, similar to what you get on the waste pipe of a washing machine. But everything's different. I'm not here to tell you specifically how to do this on your own system. You will have to find that out yourself. But this is the general principle behind it. We need to step our pipe out so it comes out a bit further so we know then that our insulation can reach all the way round so it doesn't freeze again. The way we do that is we get our little steps that we've made. So on this one here, just undo that. Then I would select two longer screws because they're going to have to span a longer distance. Then I would use the same screw hole, we're not changing the screw hole or anything like that. We might have to make the screw hole a bit deeper. And I tighten that up just slightly. I do the same over the top, just like this. Like I said, we're using the same screw hole. But now you know what I mean as well by the fact that we might need to lengthen the pipe that comes out because we're pushing the pipe off the wall. Let me just do this one down here and you'll get a closer look at how we do it. If your boiler keeps doing this, even after you've done this and your boiler is eventually ruined by the fact that we keep blocking up the condense, or maybe you've got a boiler that isn't working properly, the condense water might be black. 
then maybe you want to think about updating your boiler. Now, there is obviously the problem, not a lot of people budget, do they, for a new boiler? They budget for cars, they budget for that lovely TV and everything, but they don't budget for the big thing on the wall that keeps you warm in the winter and also make sure that you've got hot water as well. So if you haven't budgeted for it, maybe you want to consider Warmzilla. Warmzilla offers new boilers with installation at really low prices. Plus, they provide finance options including 0% interest free to spread the costs. Warmzilla uses gas safe registered engineers and is rated excellent on Trustpilot, making them the perfect choice. So, if your boiler looks a little bit worse for wear like this one here, then check out the Warmzilla links below. So, you've guessed it. Now, what can we do? We can now get our whole insulation around our pipe. Now, you're going to notice that I've got 28 mil insulation here. But I just want to do this for demonstrative purposes. You can now see, look, that goes all the way around. We've got a really good protection. I haven't dropped the pipe down because I just want to look after my little wall. But if you guys are going to drop the pipe down um, because it was not, I mean, we have got a drop here. I would probably have a little bit more of a drop on a condense. What we have is a thing called one in 40. So for every 40 centimetres along, you'd go one centimetre down. I would probably do two in 40. So for every 40 centimetres long, you go two centimetres down. But anyway, we've got enough room on here now to get on our insulation properly. And that will go all the way around the back. And also, I would suggest that if you're going to do this a really good job, you'd mark out exactly where each clip is and just cut a little slither out for each one of those clips. So this, I would say, is part two. Get some insulation on the pipe, and if you want to now, you could tie wrap it or you could tape it. I would recommend tie wraps because even if it's really good gaffer tape, it tends to just weather. And also, I think about what type of insulation you use as well, because over time, this stuff, if it's especially if it's in direct sunlight, this will start to get a little bit perished as well. So make sure you choose an insulation that's designed to be outside. So you've watched this far, I'm now going to give you the creme de month beast, all right? The best thing you can bloody well do to stop this from ever freezing. We've put insulation on, haven't we? We've stepped our pipe out, we've insulated the pipe. But I remember there was a time about five, ten years ago where it was minus five degrees minimum for about two to three weeks. And it doesn't matter how good your insulation is then. It doesn't matter if you've stepped the pipe off the wall and you've got insulation all the way around and you've tie wrapped it nice. If it's that cold for that amount of time, the cold is going to beat the insulation. In the end, it's going to get through. It's going to turn the insulation into minus five. And then in turn, that's going to turn the pipe to minus five. And inside it, guess what will happen? It will go to minus five and that will mean it freezes. So we need to put an electrical component in along the pipe to keep it above zero degrees so it doesn't freeze but only when it goes below zero so it's not on all the time and we call that trace heating and I've got a boiler trace heating pack here that I've bought off Amazon and this is also available in our Amazon store I've left links to it in the comment below and also in the description but don't click on those yet because we're going to find out exactly how this is installed so in the bag we've got are instructions that you should read. If you're a man, throw them away, and if you're a woman, read it and do it right the first time. Probably won't be allowed to say that anymore soon, Emily, you're right. So we've got our trace heating wire. This little box on the end here is our thermostat kit. This will get screwed onto the wall outside so it can get an accurate reading of the outside air temperature. We also have a little RCD trip with a reset and a test button on it. The RCD will go inside the house. We've also got a small connecting block box as well, which is very nice. Plus we have a bung because we can actually install this inside a larger condensed pipe. So if you've got an inch and a quarter condensed pipe, you can actually cut the end off it, stuff our trace heating wire down the inside of the pipe and then make good the end hole with this little rubber bung here which is really handy and also in this particular kit they very kindly supply some tie wraps as well but you can use the ones that you've got I'm sure you've got laying around in your garage all right from that mass murder idea that you had of doing so firstly so firstly let me show you how we put the trace heating wire onto the pipe itself another thing that's handy to know about this stuff is it comes in different lengths don't we all so now you're probably getting an idea as to why I've bought 28 mil because if I had 22 mil, there wouldn't be any room to actually pop our trace heating wire in. So you've measured out your pipe, you know how long you need your trace heating wire there. So you've measured out your pipe, you know how long you need your trace heating to be, and usually it's not gonna be more than hopefully, like, well, maximum like three meters, otherwise someone's run a lot of pipe outside, and they shouldn't have run it out there in the first place, all right? Now you can install this on the top or the bottom of the pipe, but, 
One thing it does say is if you're going to be going round bends, you have to be going around the outside of the bend, not the inside of the bend. It's just what the instructions say. Don't shoot the messenger, all right? So what you do is it's very simple. You just, you get your trace heating wire and you get your clip, your tie wrap, sorry, and you tie wrap it all the way along. Now, you could use more than what they've supplied when it comes to tie wraps, because they've not supplied a load. So I would say try and, you know, tie wraps are cheap, frozen pipe is expensive. And in a minute, we're gonna talk about how much one of these costs to run as well. So you get your trace heating wire all the way along. You do not cut it. If you need to make it shorter, you can't, I'm afraid. Just double it back and just make sure that there's a nice little section of pipe that's even warmer. How about that? A lucky section. It's one thing a lot of people don't seem to care about is that slight expenditure like this. I mean, this set costs 30 quid on Amazon, I think. And then the small amount of electricity that this uses, because this uses 40 watts of electricity, which in layman's terms, you could say, I don't know, it probably cost, if it was on for three hours a day, because it was cold for three hours a day, it would cost roughly 50p to a pound a month to run. How much does it cost to call a plumber out to constantly keep doing your condense? Hmm? And if it keeps freezing, it's gonna ruin your boiler. All these things, you know, it's just quite simple, isn't it? Straightforward. Now, I know you're gonna say, he hasn't gone all the way to the end. Story of my life. <laughs> but this is for demonstration purposes, or as they say in Italy, demonstrazione. So we've given ourselves the room because we've bought 28 mil insulation. It's gonna go around there beautifully like that. And it's gonna keep everything nice and warm on the condense line. But before we do that, let's just get our thermostat mounted up on the outside. Only all walls are that easy. Now, just imagine that I put a mitre in here, all right? All you true beasts. Wow, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, we're foolproofing the house. So it doesn't ever freeze ever again. Or well, the condense at least. When you get to a bracket, just make sure you mark it and just take those little segments out. Some of the more anal people who comment on these videos will say, well, that means there's gonna be a bit where it's not insulated properly well it's better than me leaving a gap that lasts 10 inches along the back which is something i've never done in my life god the amount of innuendo i've managed to fit into this one video i'm actually really quite proud of now what i do is i just go along every foot or so with a tie wrap or every couple of feet with a tie wrap to make sure that's, that, that's nice and tightly round there. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do this here because I don't wanna drill a lovely hole from my beautiful faux brick beast, as it's known. I'm gonna call it my beautiful faux brick beast for the rest of my life. Now, these are very, very simple to wire up. They are effectively a plug. If you don't know how to wire a plug up, then I'm not gonna show you how to wire this up. But it's a twin and earth cable. We've got our live, our neutral, and our earth on here. We use a small connecting block that's supplied to join that to our little MCB that we've got on here. This wire here is the wire we join up to our trace heating, and this wire here goes to our power supply. Now there's two ways of powering these, depending on what kind of installation you've got. You could wire this up to the permanent live out of the boiler housing itself. If somehow you can't do that, or you don't want to run the wire across the kitchen worktop, because it'll ruin the worktop, and you don't want that to happen, then you can just wire this into a plug, like I just said, and plug it into the wall. It will then run completely on its own. It will run separate, you won't have to think about it again. So how do these work? A lot of you are gonna be saying, well, you know, electricity is expensive at the moment and you're not wrong. How this works is we've got this thermostat out here. If it goes below three degrees, we open up a 40 watt feed, a very, very lightly trickles through feed of electricity that will heat this up along the trace of our pipe. If it goes above three degrees, guess what? It's gonna cut off. So it only ever comes on when there's a chance of it freezing. 40 watts, like I just said, is not a massive amount of money. It's not gonna break the bank, but the cost of this will pale into insignificance if you don't do this when you constantly have your condense freezing. Wiring boiler trace heating is easy and looks like this. And if you can't do a plug, then you're not allowed to see it. However, I do want to reiterate that the junction box and the RCD have to go inside. They're not IP rated. So we're just gonna put them up here on this sidewall so I can demonstrate to you how this actually works. 
Right then, guys, it's on. I had to unplug this, take it home, shove it in the freezer to get it cold enough, because I was trying to put these on there to get it cold, but it wouldn't get cold, so there we go. But look, to prove it to you, we've got an operate light on now. When this warms up again above three degrees, that will go out. One thing I'd like to say as well, I've taken it out of the freezer, and it has got condense on it, and probably condensation inside it, and it doesn't seem to be all that bothered. So if you look there, this little blue dot here is the actual, that's at four degrees now, but look, that is reading at 20, six degrees and that is what's running that trace heating there is what's running all across along here now because the thermal camera can see that heat we're not giving all that heat to the pipe are we we're actually getting rid of it and we can see that because the thermal camera can pick it up if we put on our little bit on here okay you're going to see that first little bit there but i just want you to take notice once we put this on we won't be able to see that heat anymore look at that that light now has completely disappeared apart from the little bit of wire that's sticking up it's always one of those funny things in the world of plumber parts. You kind of say about stuff, but a good way of proving it is to use a thermal camera. I'm very, very pleased to have this one here from Bosch to be able to show that to you. But there we go, that's how we do that. That's the, that is, if you always have a problem with your condense pipe constantly freezing, you know, you keep having to go outside with a, a hot bucket or whatever to sort it all out, this here, will actually fix it, okay? That is gonna warm that pipe up, lovely. And like when you put my hand in here, yeah, you can feel all the warmth inside the insulation. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to the channel if this has helped you out. Please check out Warmzilla as well. They've been kind enough to sponsor this video, so you can help us out by checking out their website as well. If your boiler does keep going wrong all the time, maybe you should think about upgrading and Warmzilla will definitely be able to help you out with finance options there. But there we go. That's how we do that. Really, really good solution. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video, guys. I'll see you in next week's video. Maybe it'll be a plumbing disasters one, but I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. And remember, it's a whole time. Jump in.